Hello and welcome to the GR Show, the weekly live and official talk show of GameRevolution.com, which is now available to watch on the Squad channel and app as part of Game Revolution's Summer Long GR3 2020 gaming coverage. Before we get started, let me just plug Game Revolution's merch store, where you get t-shirts like this and Paul's mug, but he's not here to demo it, uh, and many other great items. So all you need to do is head to GameRevolution.com and click the merch button to check it out. I'm Mac Ashworth, lead editor at Game Revolution and at Gaming with Mac on Twitter. I'm Jason Faulkner. I'm senior editor at Game Revolution. You can find me on Twitter at Jason Faulkner. And I'm Michael Larry. I'm the lead writer, and you can find me on Twitter at Orange Flavored. How are we both doing? Are we are we okay? Is it a happy it's Wednesday? Been, it's been a drought. It's no a, games to play. New new. I need I need new games, Mac. I can't talk about that. Uh, let's. <laughs> Let's move into things. So today on the GR show, we're talking about uh, Ubisoft's surprise uh, battle royale game. Uh, some new Xbox. Are they going to go somewhere else with the Ubisoft surprise that we heard? Oh about no, later? my God, that will be there as well. Sadly, what a what a bad surprise. Bad surprise. Yeah. Uh, new Xbox Series S. That's an S. Rumors. Uh, the Cyberpunk live stream event and more. So we'll start with, the, I suppose, the good. The exciting Ubisoft news, uh, which is that Hyperscape is rumored to be coming. Um, it's a free-to-play, a first-person shooter battle royale. So it's Ubisoft finally tossing their uh, hat in with... Um, there's, like, reports from multiple places, and there are actually now also... We've got some um, influencers with some goodie bags from Ubisoft posting uh, screenshots of that. So... I mean, it's, it's coming, and we're expecting it to be fully revealed tomorrow, so July 2nd, with a launch of July 12th. So it's kind of like Apex all over again. Yeah, but, like, I don't know. I don't know about you guys, but I don't really think of Ubisoft as, like, a first-person sh shooter, like, place. Obviously, they, they make they make a Rainbow. Rainbow Six, but, like, Ubisoft is such a general term, like, because there's, there's such a big publisher with so many developers in it. Um... So yeah, massive entertainment is D D Division Two. They're helping, I guess, with it. But even then, like, I don't. Mm -hmm. I think people got excited for Apex because it's, you know, it's the one of the best first-person shooter studios like out there, to be honest. And, and given the pedigree that goes all the way back to like Medal of Honor and stuff, and Call of Duty. But like, that's why people were excited for that game. And there seemed to be a hook for it. I'm just curious of what the hook's going to be for this game because I, I mean, granted, I didn't look that much into it. Not like there's much to actually look into. But like, what's the What's the thing, you know? Like, I don't... Like, I just look, look at, them at the screenshots that are out there. They're just kind of like, oh, yeah, it's like a future -y shooter, I guess. I don't know. I, I guess I'm not really... I don't get it. That's what I'm trying to get at. I don't know what you guys are taking from it, so... Uh, what are I you guys taking it, from it? I think it missed the boat. I think... Uh, <laughs> it's not even at the boat yet, but it, it already missed it. Yeah, it's, it just it. tipped off the dock into the water. The boat was already <laughs> gone. Um, I think it, it's just a saturated you know arena it's uh it's they should have done this maybe a year ago and it might have had a chance but you know uh, especially with valorant uh valorant's not a battle royale but it's in that free-to-play you know multiplayer shooter uh genre um i don't know between that fortnite apex and then the billions of, of clones and you know little Cruiser. battle royales PUBG. Uh, Crucible, you know, uh, that's doing r great. Um, yeah. I, I just don't think this is the right time for this game. I might be wrong. It might come out and be really popular and awesome, but uh, I think people are just going to see it as an also ran, and it's going to yeah. maybe, it might get a, a small player base based on the fact that Ubisoft is a massive publisher that can that can play the long game with this kind of thing, but yeah, I, I ain't seen it. That's what, that's what I was going to say too. Like, even if it does come out and it sort of is underwhelming, like Ubisoft, obviously like it's been the story for the past like five years or whatever, but they are, they're pretty good at going in and, and fixing what's doesn't work. Like obviously Rainbow Six Siege was that, um, I'm not sure if the division ever fell into that. Um, I think the first game sort of did, but like for honor, like these kind of games, I don't catch on as much. But even then, like, I feel like For Honor's pretty different. I feel like, um, obviously, Rainbow Six is, Six is really different. Um, I don't know how many more times that can go. Because, like, the crew is... They kind of did that same thing with the crew, too. And I don't really hear... I know they're still putting on updates for it, but I don't really see any, anybody talking about that game. Not like, you yeah. know, no one's playing it, but 
and then for battle royale like the most saturated of all these different types of games they've like resurrected like i don't really i don't really see how it fits again they could do it they're they've got talented people working over there for sure but um i i don't i i want to be confident that they'll do something neat um because i'm always down for something neat and awesome to come out but like i i'm a little skeptical so what about you mac you're the biggest shooter guy here i think um as jason said about all being saturated there's also loyalty to these other battle royales because of the uh, battle passes where they've invested so much into the main uh, way of monetizing which is cosmetics so people are invested into these things there's law you know there's there's huge things happening on fortnite apex is getting in there a little bit and it just feels like, oh call of duty warzone there's too many too yeah. many to remember now and, um and then probably another we're probably going to get another call of duty right reveal so yeah sometime soon shoot it's july july and we don't even have any official information and you you assume that would have a about a royale and stuff so that's just like another i know it's not free to play or at least maybe it will be we don't actually know that but yeah it's just the, the more you think about it and then i don't know it's uh, just and it's also a different direction in that it's supposedly fast-paced and just something like that i mean rainbow six we can't really compare to that because this is obviously going in a different direction um i guess as we say we kind of need to see what the the us the unique so selling point is what makes this worth playing over everything else um I mean, if they get streamers behind it, who knows what will happen as long as they've got something big at launch, because especially with this genre, it's really the first impression makes such a big difference. Um, players aren't as easy to forgive, I don't think, when there's such huge other games available. And it's free, thing it's like seen, everything else. Yeah, you know? I was going to say, the only thing I think I can see going forward is that it's free, and like the rumors, it's coming out very soon, right? And there's right. not really much coming out right now, so... I guess if they were to try it, I think it would almost work too if it was just a next-gen launch thing, but because people would be starving to pl yeah, play stuff. Yeah. But I, even then, that those game, a lot of these games are probably already playing or probably going to be backwards compatible. So it's I. This is when I'm glad I don't make games because I, I don't know what I'd do. So I'm just uh, so yeah, just there's like three screenshots I think, and then the logo hyperscape, and then a load of merch, which influences how that's all we've kind of seen. So still waiting on it uh, tomorrow. Apparently, big reveal. And uh, yeah, we should be playing it apparently within two weeks. So yeah, I guess we'll see sooner rather than later. Ubisoft making an attempt. Uh, let's move on to Xbox Series X rumors. Um, Jason, you covered this one with the, hang on, this is it. Yeah. Here we go. So more rumors of a cheaper next gen Xbox Lockhart surface after document leak. So we're hearing more about this. And um, I guess the main thing is that like we saw with Sony, they're having two PlayStation 5s and now it seems very likely that xbox is going to yeah. be doing the same yeah uh unlike ps5 though which you know the, the the difference between those two models is just the disc drive being there or not this is this looks more like a xbox one s versus xbox one x situation yeah. um which I, I i don't know how that's going to work out for xbox i think people are going to uh look at a cheaper option favorably but um the the rumored specs of the the lockhart are uh middling <laughs> to say the to say the least uh it's less powerful uh gpu wise uh than the the xbox one x uh, supposedly uh, has around the same ram uh the only advantage the Lockhart will have over the, the One X is the, the stronger CPU. You know, it'll have the same CPU uh, as as the Series X. Um, honestly, at this point, I'd be more surprised if if there wasn't an Xbox Lockhart because we've been hearing about it for for two years straight. Like this is yeah. this is the worst yeah. kept console secret ever. Um, I think we actually heard the the code name Lockhart before we heard uh, Anaconda, no. which is the, the current code name of the series x so um i think one reason microsoft might be playing it kind of close to its chest is uh um neither neither company has has revealed pricing so i think that it might be very much up in the air with microsoft as to what they're going to uh to price lockhart as um it's kind of weird because uh this time last console generation you know at e3 we got the price of both yeah i pre-ordered mine Daddy yeah things. and here we are like uh what we're like five five months four and a half five months from from launch supposedly and uh no pre-orders no pricing 
Um, so yeah, I think Lockhart might be something that Microsoft's kind of keeping up its sleeve to to try and sweep Sony's legs out from under it once they announce pricing. Yeah. Um, it, and again, like it shows like these these boxes are going to be expensive. So like I, for both the discless PS5 and the uh, uh, Lockhart. Yeah, Lockhart. Anyway, uh, it, it makes you think like what would be a good price for both of these like second tier consoles? Because for PS5, it's like you know same stuff but on the inside but like how much is that disk drive going to be worth it i think it they should cut off more because then you have to buy digital which means you have to go through them anyway um but lockhart it's like different because you know like how much bigger step is it above the ser or not the series x the one x um and how much is it below the the, the series x it's just there are a lot of like weird uh, pricing competition so it's like there could be a weird way where like the lockhart is like 100 bucks cheaper than the the series x and then the discless version of the ps5 is 50 bucks cheaper and then there's like three tiers of consoles between both of them so it's like uh, it, it's just like a odd pricing scheme that i i don't <laughs> everyone's trying to like limbo under these big prices these things are going to come into and they're both taking them on mm -hmm. in a different way i think i do prefer sony's way because i'd rather have just sort of consistency around everything like the horsepower like they're you know they're gonna like it would it's what happened with like the, all those dd or dds all those ds variants were like some of them were just they ran like shit on the normal ds or, or 3ds or whatever so i don't think you want to split the power base like that but so, I mean, you want to so you buy it. So. Saying that, you saying that about parity between uh, the hardware. In that, the good thing about this PS5 is that everyone's going to have the same system, and I, am, I assume developments going to be the same for everything. Whereas Microsoft are going into it where there are so many, like a PC uh, game, there are so many variations, which is an issue normally when you're like five, yeah. six years into it, where you're then like you know making a game for last gen and current gen and the current gen is is held back because of that that need yeah. for parity um it i assume xbox has something where it's just easier now to you know make a game for each one and just crank up the resolution or whatever but otherwise just assuming yeah yeah but not. otherwise like wow this is like a start they're starting out with so many so many consoles Caveat. and it's just yeah. like what it also sort of reminds me of the Xbox 360, where like they always had to develop um, with it in mind that the, not all 360s had a hard drive. Especially, I mean, in the beginning, they didn't have most of them didn't have, or not most, but some of them didn't have hard drives. There was like PS3, every PS3 had a hard drive, so they could always go in knowing that. And like, you know, I, I can't. It's it was it's been so long, but I remember there being like some sort of rumblings of like having to, you know, think of that, like of the the few Xbox 360s that don't have hard drives. Yeah. So. And it's I can, kind of weird at Microsoft making the same mistake or the same uh, route. I can, but, I, can, I can kind of see that being like one of the imperatives for releasing Lockhart because it is it's basically a one X with a better CPU. Mm -hmm. So uh, but that hard drive is, is going to be a huge deal this generation. So um, I, I can see Microsoft being stuck between a rock and a hard place with being like, you know, we know not everybody's going to want to pay six hundred dollars for a Series X, but we need to get those those SSDs out there because you know next gen development is going to probably heavily center around uh, the thought that people have a, a solid state drive installed in either their PC or console. So I yeah. I can see um, them not wanting to uh, to kind of hobble next gen game development by by keeping people on the One X and, and you know using that that mechanical hard drive and then still having you know whole whole triangle to open the door very slowly so the game can load <laughs> yeah the, just the corridors are a lot longer on the xbox yeah. versions like man yeah. i'm sidling through this thing for like five minutes yeah man i could get me my ss oh no michael jason he's oh, yeah. there he is he's back he's back you yeah. froze on my you froze on my screen oh i'm sorry Here's did you hear what i said no you said no. something mac get, get me, me my <laughs> <laughs> give me my internet now. I said, give me my SSDs, Mac. I'm tired of loading. I don't even want oh, to think about it. Oh. I can't wait. Oh my God. Yeah. It's going to be so hot. Um, let's move on to some Naughty Dog news. So we've got uh, first up, first up, we've got The Last of Us 2. Uh, there's no plans for DLCs, Michael. It's not, yeah. it's not, well, he's telling us um, that there's going to be no DLCs. But what do you think? Of, what do you make of this? Because yeah, so I I mean, I'm kind of the weird person to ask, too, because I'm the one that, like, you know, 
I had my fill of The Last of Us while while playing, but um, I think that's actually a good thing because I think The Last of Us is very full. Although if you would have asked me about The Last of Us 1, I would have said the same thing. And I think Left Behind is probably, um, I think if I had to rank them, Left Behind is probably the best piece of DLC I've ever played. So like, um, they obviously can do it. And you remember Lost Legacy for Uncharted was also supposed to be DLC and that was just this whole separate thing. So I think Naughty Dog's pretty good at like finding where to do DLC, but... Yeah, if they don't want to do DLC, I think that's I think that's totally fine. Um, if I mean, there are different ways they could um, go about it. They maybe could pick Isaac or something, or, or like um, other characters, and and like before the game. Uh, yeah, I I think that's okay. I'm surprised they were so upfront about it um, that they said just like, hey, we have no plans for DLC. Again, that doesn't mean no DLC ever, but I think that's pretty telling because you know they were pretty upfront with um because they had season passes for the last two games yeah. and this game they didn't so like even that i think is pretty telling that they didn't make any sort of commitment so yeah I- i'm okay with not having dlc i think they kind of explored a lot what they needed to explore in the main game uh you two liked it more than i do so what do you guys I, I, i'm just thinking <laughs> why don't we give why don't we give the people that want it that joel gameplay you know get tommy and joel I mean, pre pre last was two get the brothers going you know going out that would be that would be interesting like but then i think they would have to justify it narratively because if you think about left behind yeah it was very fun to see like the duality of her before and during the game but like you know they had a pretty big character revelations in that story dlc that like you know are very much blossomed in in the second game which um i think uh giving people their joel game or whatever like i think it would be that'd be tricky because you know, you don't want to make it seem like it's the Mass Effect thing where like, oh, we did this because everyone was pissed. <laughs> you want to make it actually feel like yeah. it actually where it feels like it, it like deserves it. And I think since people hold that story in such a sacred light, I think it would have to be a lot to go back to that world in a way that people are OK with. So yeah. I, what think about you, there, I think there's there's two parts of the game that could really use expanding upon. Um, the first is Ellie and uh Dina's journey from from Jackson to Seattle, and yeah. the, the first part of the game, uh, because it, it's like a month haul, like yeah. uh, like I think I said last podcast, and I think um, their relationship uh, ramped up really quickly because I yeah. think during during that month, you know, obviously they got to know each other better, you know, they they grew closer together, but from what we see, it it, it cuts from Jackson to Seattle, yeah, and you're like, oh man, these. But like at first, I thought it was like a, a couple days, and I was like, "Man, they are really in love for 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 being together like two or three days." But being able to see like that 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 month of what would would have been a lot of hardship because you're you're you know probably following a, a derelict highway through multiple states, um, and, you know, facing danger and whatnot together. Yeah. I think that would add a lot to. Um, their their characters because you you don't get to see them together much like yeah dina, dina gets sick on day one so she's pretty much you know you see her at the end of each day um they they go to the farmhouse eventually uh and you get like a brief scene there but you don't really get to see them grow as a couple and i think uh that that's an important thing because obviously the relationship uh was like a, a big part of ellie's duality in the game like the her being split between revenge and you know her feelings in relationship with dina yeah um, i think that could use some expounding upon um and also like you were saying isaac uh because he yeah. seems to be a, a major figure in the game that we learn absolutely nothing about <laughs> yeah he's, he's got two scenes and and one of them is in shadow half the time the other one's at night so like yeah. <laughs> you don't really get to so, like see him he seemed like he kind of had the Colonel Kurtz thing going on. So yeah, I, would good, have, good call. I would have liked to have, have seen more about that and more about like, uh, you know, how, how the conflict between the scars and the WLF kind of came to be and uh, more about their prophetess. You know, we, we saw a lot yeah. of her, but it didn't really ever pan out. So, yeah, yeah, that's see what's weird about this is like i like i like a lot of these these ideas aren't like bad or anything i think there's there's a lot in the last of us to you know to, to my, in my opinion to a fault but like to latch on to but i think there's a little like beauty in the sort of like not everything needed to be explained because i remember them talking about doing dlc for the first game and like ish i know you guys i don't know if you guys remember ish but his like little um like bunker in in the first game um that you go through like sam and henry and stuff but like um just that 
they didn't want to make him DLC because they figured that players had already like had so many so much a, a really good head cannon on that stuff. So I'm wondering if a lot of this stuff like deserves DLC because or, or, or they wouldn't want to make DLC for the same reason because a lot of this stuff is like well we don't need explanation for everything. So it's a, again, it's a weird balance of like what stories need to be told. Like you'd have to make a, con- a compelling. Not I, what I don't want them to do is just fill in a spot just to fill it in. Like I think that arc needs to have its own or that spot needs to have its own arc and i think that's probably where they're running a bit but you know i'd rather have them work on the deal or the the multiplayer to be honest because i really would have liked to be yeah. playing that now me and you mac we'd be, we'd be shipping dudes it'd be I'm so a, fun but it was so good the, the first games was by is yeah, it they, 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 tied a, about, they tied a trophy to it didn't they where you had to hit like i don't even know rank yeah, 12 or something weeks. and so yeah, you had to be weeks. consistent you had to be consistent oh, every game one nightmare you couldn't. Oh, I thought it was so tense because you had to like actually keep up your settlement because you could lose all of your yeah, settlement on yeah. like week eleven if you didn't. If you did like a challenge and didn't uh, didn't complete it or something, it'd start mm-hmm. all over. Um, but yeah, I, I man, that multiplayer was so good. So they they also talked about that in the interview. Well, very briefly because uh, it was on Greg Miller's like spoiler cast with Neil Druckmann and stuff, and he talked about the multiplayer. And then he just Neil Druckmann just kind of went like this and did that. So it, obviously, it's still coming. Um, because you know he straight up said no plans for DLC and did the zip thing with the with the multiplayer. So I'm I'm excited for that. I want to see what they've been doing because again it's been seven years or more by the time the multiplayer comes out. So I'm I want to see what they what they do for for that for sure. But let's anyway. uh, let's move on to Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I just got excited <laughs> by the name of the game and then realized what the actual article is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Assassin's Creed article. Valhalla creative director steps down amid controversy. Uh, Michael, you reported yeah, on this. I uh, did. So uh, Ashraf Ismail, he directed, uh, he had different roles, but he directed Black Flag and Origins, which I'm going to say two best Assassin's Creed games. Mm. Um, he was the creative director on this one, though. So he had been, he had been, he had stepped up for, for this one. Um, he was game director for the other two. So obviously game director, then creative director for the whole vision so he um I, obviously anyone who's been on the hellhole of twitter like mm. have noticed a bunch of people uh coming forward with stories of abuse um yeah just kind of abuse is <laughs> abuse and misconduct kind of gets covers everything um which again is a spectrum of abuse which i want to make clear because people seem to think if you're not you know completely you know violating someone sexually then it doesn't count and who cares which again huge spectrum here so a woman came forward and was like, hey, he's been, like, essentially, if this man, like, tries to uh, start a relationship with you, he know that he's married. And then she posted a bunch of the text messages and stuff that they allegedly sent to each other and, like, um, how he, because she sent him a picture with him with a ring on. She's like, what's this? And he's like, oh, I just keep it to, like, so I don't shame my family and stuff like that. So um, apparently more people came forward in her, like, privately to her and like he'd been essentially using his um game director status uh status within the industry to sort of uh hook up with women and start like these secret relationships with him so she was sort of saying she said she was kind of doing this to save uh other people so essentially that, that's an abuse of power um no matter how you look at that and so he uh took a leave of <laughs> he said he was stepping down from being a creative director and then within like an hour he just deleted he nuked his twitter account i don't think it's even um back up yeah his twitter account doesn't exist anymore so he nuked it right after um which i don't know man that's a that's a weird it's a it's like he just threw his career away i don't know for how long i'm not saying he'll never bounce back from this but like that it, it just it's part of this whole story of this whole industry like of these mostly dudes getting in power and just kind of nuking their credibility just because they're using their power to do some pretty shitty things and um i don't uh, i mean the game i'm not really worried about the game necessarily because this is more of a people problem i'm worried about the people in the story but i don't know the game will probably be fine and i think that just goes to show that we don't need to put abusers in in top position top in top positions and this also came in the wake of other just ubisoft Things where even yeah. Ubisoft came forward and said, "Hey, we're we're vind- independently or investigating or whatever." However, they said it because there was like there was way worse stuff than this. Like there was a, r- reports of like choking and like you know just just bad stuff from other top people at Ubisoft in similar like director positions. Um, so 
I don't know, man. It, it's it's so profoundly shitty that this industry had has been dealing with this, this for so long. I'm glad it's sort of coming out, and so we can like put an end, put an end to it. Um, but yeah, it's just a no one wins here. I I just it's so it's so bad, you know. Just reading this stuff that just it's still coming out too. Like, man, he's just uh, he's just one of the Ubisoft employees to get fired, isn't he? Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it, it sucks too because he was such like a nice guy. Like I, I think he was one of my first interviews I actually did for this site, and I was like, man, this guy's super rad. I talked to him for a really long time, and he's really cool. And yeah, just I mean that goes to show that like, even the nice guys are can be terrible people and that abuse their their power. So um, also, I think it's funny in the text messages if you look in her first ones, she calls him Habibi, which means like sweetheart, and then the other ones is just his name. So you can tell obviously between these when these messages were sent something. Something definitely went down, but let's let's press on because uh, we've had so much negativity. <laughs> let's yeah, talk I'm about Cyberpunk. Impressed. So this has been delayed, but there was uh, the Night City Wire uh, live stream, which was 25 minutes long, and we got to see a trailer, um, and then we got to see some gameplay of the brain dance uh, mechanic. So what was interesting about the trailer is. It's all footage, and we learned this after we saw it because it's like the most explosive trailer. There's so much going on. And I assumed it was from the whole game. And I was like, oh, is the spoilers here? But it, no, it's all from the prologue, which um, that opening mission looks like it's going to be pretty insane. Um, and I just, uh, the thing, of, uh, there is actual leaked footage as well, um, where you can watch entire segments of the video, uh, of the gameplay. And so you can see the prologue mission. Um, but speaking just from what we saw here, I mean, I'm excited for it. Obviously, these delays, it kind of push your excitement away a little bit. I mean, just for me, uh, it's kind of a natural thing where I was hyped up for that big initial release. Was it April? Um, yeah, and now, and now we're a... just way, way back. Um, but yeah, I, I, I watched it. I, I reacted. We, we had a live stream and um, the trailer looked good. Then we saw the brain dance mechanic, which is essentially you um, plug in and experience someone's memory. And so the twist is that the the best memories are those that have a death. So the the, the person who's having their memory recorded uh, dies, and like that that rush of endorphins or whatever uh, is is what makes them so so valuable. Um, and the whole scene there was that you inside of the memory you can like move around almost like a photo mode and see how things work. Like for example, this guy got shot in the back, so you didn't see his killer from his point of view, so you had to like m maneuver around to see that. And apparently it's not just a, a side mission thing, this will tie into the uh, certain story missions and whatnot. Um, it looked interesting, it, it just looked like a very, very small snippet though, you know, of, uh, of the yeah. game. Um, I don't know if you two saw any of this? No. Yeah, I uh, I watched it. I, I... It's one of those things where it's like, there's a bunch of little snippets and it all looks cool, but I'm wondering how it's going to play out because it's like we haven't seen uh, besides the, the the demo from last year, which uh, I saw at E3. I don't know if they made that one public, but it was like a 40 minute kind of uh, end game demo. Um, yeah, it, it, it's hard to tell how all this is going to fit together because there's a lot of really cool like ideas and, you know, the, the environment's really cool. And I like, the you know, the subject matter. Um, but you know this this is probably going to be like a hundred hour game so it's like is this all going to fit together cohesively and is you know um i i would have preferred it instead of 20 minutes of whatever if they would have just gave us like 20 minutes of prologue or or a mission or something yeah. to see how all this fits together um i think it's gonna be good okay go on oh you, go ahead Oh, no, I cut out, so I thought you stopped talking. So I, I interrupted. I'm sorry. But I was just going to say the prologue is apparently different depending on your backstory. So I think that's kind of a cool little detail. And that, that's um, another thing. Like 100 hours just for that that single character in that single playthrough when there's going to be multiple routes and there's going to be multiple ways to play. Oh, my word. Yeah. It's going to be the witch all over again. You know, like <laughs> even worse. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. It's one, I didn't watch it because I'm not like really pumped for that game. I'm not, I'm not really big. I never played The Witcher. I have it <laughs> in case I want to play it. But um, I, I just, um, I don't know. I just, I'm not really that pumped about it. But I probably will play it because of the setting. So um, I'll, I'll play it one day. That's why I'm not really watching 
anything about it and i'll probably just play it on like the next gen when they when they get fix it, switch, it and do mate. a bunch of cool stuff <laughs> you know, I'm going for the, the pump switch per, version to make my, <laughs> my my switch light sweat but yeah i i i it does sound really awesome it does it's definitely more appealing to me than witcher 3 because um uh techno stuff is better than old uh fantasy stuff so yeah i uh, i'm not really like that perturbed if they show more like usually i avoid stuff because i really want to look at it like the last of us or something but like for this it's like yeah i'll play it one day and I, the benefit of not me not caring now is when i do eventually get into it i will not know what's going on in a good way so it sounds cool though. i should also say there's uh, a cyberpunk 27 uh no cyberpunk edge runners so it's an anime um by no. trigger and that's coming to netflix uh, Trigger made Kill La Kill and Darling in the Franks, so they're established. Uh, a, a cyber... they, like, that sounds good. You know, I was, yeah, it does sound kind of neat because, like, the whole like at least you can sort of emulate like something like The Witcher because it's not really like technologically advanced. It's mm. just swords and it's not to be productive, but it's mostly just swords um, and some magic. But here it's like I don't even know how you do a cyber like that seems significantly more expensive if you were to do that live action. So. It's kind of like if it's like the animation uh, world more because you can just draw it instead of having to, you know, animate like and add special effects and stuff. So yeah. I think that's a better idea. I wonder if this was like part of the same sort of conversations of making The Witcher or, or they saw The Witcher did and uh, sort of went from there. So I, I, I'm, I'm glad that more people want are getting to experience uh, gaming uh, world in, in different ways. I think that's a, ex an excellent way to, to do this one in particular. But it's anime, so it's going to suck. That's what I'm going to say. Oh, there's, there's the Animatrix. That's what it reminds me of. Well, that's what I think of. <laughs> yeah, it uh, does. Uh, let's move on. To this This is a mystery. Uh, Dr. Disrespect has been banned from Twitch. And we still, we still, we still don't, know, right? don't know why. So over the weekend, I was kind of like flicking through Twitter, which I wouldn't advise these days, but I was doing it. And um, just, just waiting, you know, for some announcement or some explanation, but it's still not there. So Twitch yeah. streamer Dr. Disrespect seems to have been banned from Twitch and um, it's now blank. And he also tweeted out after that article was posted, uh, Twitch has not notified me on the specific reason behind their decision. And then uh, it signs off in his usual style. I mean, what is going on? <laughs> Dude, I honestly thought we would get it that night because uh, the story came in like pretty hot and then yeah. And nothing, because uh, uh, Rod, Rod Breslow, he's like a really big esports reporter. He he he's like, hey, like he's been banned or whatever. And then he came forward. Uh, some people had been rumbling, uh, I think former Twitch employees or something. And then Breslow came out again and was like, hey, like I found out from a few people and it's kind of fucked up and I don't want to say. Um, which again, people don't know how journalism works. He's not just gonna say it if he if you know. There's certain rules I think he and he thought this maybe broke some sort of ethical brown boundaries or something or just in the maybe the content but uh yeah i mean it's easy to jump to the conclusion that this was super fucked up because it might be because of, you know again we don't know so we're not projecting yeah like, we, we can't know we can't speculate on anything but i mean twitch has put up with some things and it's time for its big that's, creators that's saying, yeah. you know so i mean maybe we'll get an explanation soon i mean the guy can't stream or earn a living at the moment so presumably you know <laughs> and also his last stream ended very like it, it is very weird like it's like some alien abduction shit that goes on at the end like it's pretty weird and again we're not saying any what happened because we, well, we don't know but like i don't know i just have a bad feeling about all this so yeah i mean I've, he's not a great I've dude all, but i've also seen the uh oh the the theory that he is going to create he's helping create a new streaming service to, to rival twitch so wait you know, really yeah uh i, I don't uh, know if you guys saw all, the, the spot the spotify gaming thing right. and also brian yeah. there's there's loads popping up though it's just like so much confusion so many conspiracies yeah. it's just it's it's pretty wild to be honest uh on a, on an outside perspective just uh trying to track it but um, it's getting people interested in the guy that might not otherwise, you know, because I don't watch him. But now I'm like checking him it out. Sucks. Yeah. It, it sucks because he, he falls into that trap of like, um, I feel like Stephen Colbert, when he used to do the Colbert Report, he'd find a really good way to be like, hey, it's my character talking. You say some mess up things. But you, you understood that it wasn't Colbert actually talking. Yeah. It was the shitty 
character or like i feel like he has so, so, or dr disrespect had just sort of like abandoned all that and just said like straight up you know covid like conspiracy theories like oh it's my character or it's like it's i don't know it's just it's where's the where's the line get blurred you know because yeah. the dude doesn't seem like a great person from what yeah. we've seen of him and then it's just like well i can just be shitty and put on a you know a fucking wig and pretend like it's not really me speaking so it gives you carte blanche to say some horrible shit mm. so like i don't i don't know maybe that just you know i don't know it, it's it's all fucked up and weird and i don't like it and he sucks so we don't have paul here and it's a shame because he's always missing the Animal Crossing news. <laughs> and I know neither of you really care about Oh, to be fair, I've not played. That was in, like, a great two... transition, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm losing. I've lost a lot of sleep for some reason. Um, and you know, I'm just, I'm just going with it. <laughs> Uh, okay. So, Animal Crossing New Horizons adds swimming and diving in the Wave One summer update. So there will be a Wave Two update in August. Um, this all sounds so, I don't know, mundane to, to you guys, but the new update includes swimming and diving, sea creature oh, donations, yeah. new encounter with Pascal the Otter, new DIY recipes, and a new encounter with Gulliver, who is now dressed like a pirate. Um, I mean, for me, this was pretty significant. I didn't expect to be going off into my ocean, you know, like around my island. Uh, prior to this, the updates have been pretty... Uh, Lackluster in terms of the events. Um, they had a horrific. They had the worst Easter one, which actually uh, was detrimental to your to your progression in the game, where you were like digging up eggs when you didn't want eggs, uh, and that that riled up the community somewhat. Um, this looks much better in that it's not actually offending people um, who are just trying to yeah. trying to you Is know farm. It's out. <gasps> Why'd you do that to me, Michael? Uh, it it is I out. Know. I don't know. Okay. It is uh, out. Oh, Friday, of course. Of course, I'm counting down the days. So two days. Uh, yeah, so yeah, this I, Friday, you'll be able to swim in your ocean. Okay, so break this down for me. <laughs> I don't know. I don't play Animal Crossing. What's so funny? I But every time I feel like people talk about this game, especially post-launch, it's like they hate it, and I don't understand, like... <laughs> is it like this compulsion thing where like they have to play it but they hate the new shit like it's so it blows my mind that everything that comes after this game it's gone oh, this sucks i hate the eggs i didn't i didn't know what the eggs were for a long time and i just heard everyone oh, hate the eggs. and then i heard like then like i don't think the second update did much like i don't really know and like <laughs> this one like i i just there's so much like hostility towards this game and it's like i thought people loved this game but we gave it a four and a half and uh, i don't know i just it's, can you um, explain that to me is well, it just it's uh with with the Easter challenge that was like on the island there's like fossils that are buried and it's only a fossil. If you see a, an X on the floor, you dig it up, it's going to be a fossil. But with the Easter event, it could be an egg and these eggs were so pointless once you had But I mean like generally, I feel like people are just complaining oh. about everything now. So I, I mean maybe, everything I takes know. forever. Everything takes forever. Like just oh, me for example, I'm trying to landscape or whatever and I'm digging, but the digging it's a little finicky, and so you might sometimes miss a square. So then you have to dig that square, shape it. This is like an additional shaping step, and then you have to <laughs> remove it. And it's just like, I mean, I put t I've put, i got the TV on, and I'm playing the game, but like, if you are trying to just play it and enjoy it, it is so slow to do things. Uh, people have you know, 400, 500 hours in this already, and I mean, I can understand why, in that it's very cool, you can make your own little place, um, it's incredibly imaginative, you know, it's got that Minecraft fat, uh, factor, I suppose, but everything takes forever. Everything takes so long, um, which is what happens with, like, the Easter event just makes it take longer, basically. Whereas this looks like a positive change in that you can now go off your island. Um, one of the dangers of making your island, uh, planning it all out and getting it all sorted is that these future updates, which may introduce new buildings and stuff, can impact that so then you have to redo your island a bit um, oh, no. this avoids that danger in that you literally just jump in the ocean and have a good time which is i think one of the safest things they could have done um but yeah paul will be excited i'm good. sure he's actually gone like off it. it a little bit paul he's actually uh stopped playing a little bit but i think he's getting back into it so yeah even like, like a drug <laughs> yeah i mean 400 500 hours it kind of is isn't that fly me <laughs> yeah sure all right let's move on to crucible oh my word what is going on with this you know i owe us a review of this game 
I, I owe is one. But when I went to play it, um, to, to finalize my thoughts, I suppose, they'd re removed two out of three of the modes. So they were focusing on one mode. And then it was just this whole thing where the player base dwindled. Um, Jason, you reported on this. So it dropped from 120,000 views on Twitch. So that obviously Battle Royale on Twitch, that's kind of where a lot of the uh, the traction comes in. And then it went down to 69. Nice, as of writing. Nice. Um, nice. So no no one watching on Twitch. And Shroud did stream this. I did watch him uh, stream it without promotion. So he just went, oh, let's check this out. Um, and obviously that didn't. Did he hate it? Uh, he did well in it, so I guess he likes it. The problem with Shroud is he plays everything, does well in everything, and likes everything. Um, I'd like everything if I was getting, you know, 20 kills, one death yeah. every game. Uh, yeah. but the, it was like 183 players down from a peak of 10,600. And it's just, I think we can Wait, put it down. You're saying 183 players were playing the game at once, that's it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that would be yesterday. Oh. And so, oh, man. I mean, oh, that, so, so he's kind of done something that's, Jason, I don't know if you've heard of another example, but the game is out, or, well, it is out still, but they're moving it back into closed beta. So that, there's this launched game that is going back into closed beta, which is something, for the most part, unheard of. I don't know. And it's They're trying uh, to put the chicken back in the egg, dude. It's weird. <sighs> I don't know. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, the way. <laughs> what do we expect, honestly? Because it came out, it did a big old turd, and then they were like, "Well, shoot, uh, we can just help, uh, maybe help it the perception by just putting it back in in the eggshell." Should it just speak. keep launching so, like, it? Keep pulling yeah, it back. Launch like, it again. Pull it back. Launch it, it again. I, I read the. I read a little bit of what they said, but I forget the details. But like, I. I mean. <laughs> It had to be something pretty significant to have it come out again and like capture people because like I don't even what, what was what was missing. It just seemed like it was just kind of like a what like we were talking about with the Ubisoft thing. It just seemed like a sort of even though there was like an, an interesting hook to this one like or interesting hook like it had something. So like I don't really I it had to do something pretty significant to make it in my in my preview period where admittedly I had a developer in my ear and telling me what to do as I went along. <laughs> Uh, and we were using Discord for voice chat. Uh, I had a great time with it. And so I thought it was going to do well because I assumed that Amazon, owners of Twitch, were going to kind of reinforce the launch with uh, a bunch of influencers, you know, because that's what you, you would do. Um, yeah. But that just didn't happen. It just launched. No one knew. And then this kind of voice, the missing voice chat, uh, which I did mention in my preview and I mentioned to the devs uh, while I was there, Obviously, everyone just latched onto that. So any mention, it's such a he is such hugely focused on team play, and not being able to talk to people is mad. Like even with a ping system, yeah. it's just not. It, it just wasn't going to work out. And so there's the pedigree of the developers as well. There's some like well known, like they've worked on big games, and it's just such a shame to kind of see it in what is going to be limbo. Like you get one first impression. I don't really think. Yeah any good's gonna come of this um i don't, I don't either and it sucks because like uh because was it paul who said it but someone someone said it where it was like google and amazon are like positioned to like mm. really take on microsoft and sony and nintendo i guess for that matter but like they're totally just kind of dropping the ball like stadia like i mean that's then like we said it needs to just be integrated into what you already buy and not buy something separate and that just seems like no one's doing that um, and then Amazon, like, I mean, when they announced, they announced like three games when they came out or something and like one of them got canceled or something or two. And like, this was the third one. It's like, I don't like, it just seems like every step, these big companies just don't know what to do with all this stuff. So I don't know, man, just, They're, it, it sucks. They but, don't seem to be enthusiastic at all. Like, I don't get the impression that like Amazon is really like, oh man, that's so cool. We have game studios. It seems more like, ah, what what don't we have? Yeah, oh, look at the we don't, we don't make games. It's, it's literally like Amazon Basics, where they you know find a popular product and then you know make their own yeah. little version of it, and now they've done a game. Like it's and it's so sad to see. You heard it here. Crucible is the Amazon Basics <laughs> of, of, of hero shooters. Uh, when more of you comes out, I'll, I'll use that. <laughs> I can I can I can see how frustrating it must be though for Relentless Studios mm. to be like. You know, they obviously put a lot of work into this. It's not like a, like a, you know, an asset flip or, no. yeah. you know, a Z tier game. It's like they did work hard on this and to 
launch this and you know have the backing of such a large company and you know have 183 people playing it a month after launch like i just i don't, I don't know if i could handle that so yeah. I, I really commend the, the the dev team for, for trying it all instead of just yeah. being like you know maybe we should like buy a shrimp boat and <laughs> do that make a pet shrimp <laughs> Yeah, in the bayou. I don't know. Uh, it, yeah, I'm, I'm, I am I'm. do want to look at the human part of this, obviously, because yeah. that, that does suck. And it, it sucks to have this, you'd think this like overlord of company like looking after you, and then it kind of just feels like it, you kind of look at how soulless it is and like how they didn't really promote it. Like I saw multiple people when it came out. I mean, us included, like I didn't know it was coming out. And mm -hmm. I, I read game news like every day. So it's like, I don't know, the fact that a lot of people didn't know it was coming out. And the fact that this big company could have put it on the fucking I'd boxes and shit people, you know what I mean? Like, I'd love to hear but, Amazon's excuse, you know, for for why they didn't push this. Like, yeah, stupid. Maybe they didn't want people to think that they were, I don't know, being anti-competitive by using their own services to push their game or something. Oh, so they they went Wait, too far. It, to, was it free play? Uh, yeah, it's yeah, free yeah. To, okay, so yeah, I don't think there's a problem in that necessarily. Yeah. Like. Uh, you're not really paying i mean paying a time is obviously a big deal but yeah it's sad i hope it comes out again i want all the even with the ubisoft game like it'd be cool if they were good i mean shit whatever who cares but like uh it i just i don't know the little the yellow robot is cool but oh I don't know so, if do it. so but, the, the game's creative director was using that robot uh against me and he's the one that ended up killing me so like, oh, yeah. it was just, I it was so, like i know every <laughs> development team's got people and they're all passionate but it was kind of a shame for me, obviously, it's my experience. I was in there. I was hearing the writers break down the law, all sorts, while we were waiting for the servers, and it's just such a shame. Like a lot of the time, I'm kind of ignorant, and it's a good thing. Like when you're reviewing a game, you want to focus on the game. You don't want to think about, you know, these people yeah. are putting bread on the uh, table and whatnot. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. but I was there. I was hearing how passionate they were, and it's just such a shame to see it go this way, as it is with with most other projects that that end up. Uh, flopping yeah <sighs> especially like what happened i don't know hope, 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 good luck but they're yeah, gonna need it i don't see it. Need to rebrand. crucible it's not, not it's very good seo man like, i can't find that game anthem. anywhere <laughs> yeah it's uh, like you need a you need a hook you need like maybe crucible with a k crucible <laughs> change that change that i to a y crucible. <laughs> oh man crucible <laughs> throw a y in there yeah yeah, KY. Alrighty, let's uh, let's bring this thing to an end then. Uh, thanks everyone for listening and/or watching on the Squad channel and app, Twitch or YouTube. If you're enjoying the GR show, be sure to hit the follow button on Twitch to be notified of future streams. Or if you're on YouTube, you'll be wanting to hit like and subscribe. And also make sure to head to GameRevolution.com for all of your video game coverage needs. I've been Mac, joined by Jason and Michael. See you next week. Bye bye. bye.